the, the Sacred Foundry to play Boros Elite, and then he can tap his Sun Petal Grove to pay, play Experiment Mon. He might have another play here. It doesn't look like he does, though, so I think he maybe just mistapped a little. An actual just mistake. Yeah, let's see if he's got anything on, on uh, Felipe's turn to, uh, to play. I, there's no Lightning Bolt here, no. so... Yeah, yeah, that was out, unfortunate. Out comes Grave Crawler, and now. All right, so let's see if he can recover from his uh, early stumble here. Mm -hmm. It's early in the morning. It is. Thought is hard work. I mean, that was literally that would have literally been the second and third spells of the day. So. Mm -hmm. Cavern of Souls comes down for Nico, who is already down to twelve, having done not much. Experiment one appears, and Champion of the Parish will get a second counter. It's now a three-three. And now here is Burning Tree Emissary. Counter. Evolve. Wow. He's going to use the two mana from Burning Tree Emissary to play a Lightning Mauler. Indeed. Which is another human. And all of a sudden that Champion of the Parish is, what, five power? And look at this. He gets to attack. He gets a trigger from Boros Elite. Battalion action. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage coming in. Yep. Now, did he ever evolve his experiment one? Well, I think he pointed to it. Maybe and he just maybe has just one dice. Okay. Because he should have gotten mm. one one uh, one evolve trigger off of that from the uh, well from any number of things, but the the emissary of the lightning Mall. Right? Yeah. Maybe he's just tracking down a dice. So, in comes a nice and conservative attack now because we've we've finally established that Nico Christensen's the beat down in this one. So there's and still no dice on that experiment one. I, I I can only assume that he's not evolved it. It looks like it's not going to punish him too hard here though as he's going to be able to cast a burning tree emissary and evolve it anyway on this turn which is essentially the same thing. Always assuming he remembers this time. That's a, that's a good point. See, right, he does point again, to both. he pointed at both. Okay I think he just forgot to put the dice on it. Wow. Attacks. All right. <coughs> well, he, he's in a similar spot that he would have been in anyway, so it didn't end up uh, punishing him too badly. But he is just going to attack with everybody yeah. very calmly. <laughs> he, we do see him point at the Boros Elite, indicating that he wants his battalion trigger. Uh huh. You did tune into standard action here today, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boros Elite. Uh, Boros Elite Experiment 1. Yeah. Burning Tree Emissary. <laughs> oh, that's an okay. He's like, maybe he's splashing wow, for and the white. Wow, and Felipe has to scoop. That's it. Top tip, Nico Christensen, your deck forgave you a lot in that last three minutes. Indeed. Wake up. <laughs> wow. Christensen leads 1-0 to zero over the Chilean Felipe Tapia Becerra. So what else have we got going on? I think uh, John Stern is in the feature match area. He's further down uh, the standings. I'm just starting to have a look. He's at uh, one of the seven and two players. Now, realistically, I was talking to one of the guys last night who had made it into their first day two at seven and two. Mm -hmm. um, chap by the name Peter Easton and was thrilled to be into day two. And congratulations to him. And he was like, so what do I have to do tomorrow? I said, well, you know, you just keep on winning until somebody stops you winning. Because realistically, from seven and two, you kind of go eight, two, nine, two, ten to eleven, two. Then you kind of think you might be buying yourself into a chance. But then you really have to go 12-2 because when you go 11-3, and three, it's kind of over. Uh -huh. um, so you get to 12-2 and two, and then you just hope that you're able to ID. That's kind of how it mostly works. But there are only 128 players. So that bar may slightly lower uh, as we wait for game two between these two undefeated players. Remember, the other perfect record belongs to Christian Seybold. And Jonathan Deary, two points further back on 25. Oh, wow. you see, did you see the giant growths in his hand there? Mm -hmm. I do see that it looks like he's going to be taking those out. I think he's got those in the they're coming out pile. You know, he doesn't want to get blown out by any type of removal. Mm -hmm. um, I see that he's got <coughs> uh, Boros Charms, which are, looks like they're going to be coming out as well. But let's see what he's bringing in. Near Heath Pilgrim seems amazing in his deck. He can't cast it off of Burning Tree Emissary, but uh, but he can probably get some pretty potent life gain hits off of it. Yeah, and that uh, Champion of the Parish was ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like he didn't even maximize its its growth, and it still just was huge. Five, five, six, six, without even trying. You know what it reminds me of watching? Mm -hmm. 
it, and it, and it kind of it makes it makes me appreciate how powerful the card is. Is it reminds me of Evolve. You know, it's like, oh, I play a guy oh, yeah. and I get to grow my guy, but it doesn't care how big it is, <laughs> yeah. it's just as long as it's a human. And man, I gotta say, like, that's pretty impressive when you actually see it, because Evolve is, I, I mean, I think that we could see Evolve in standard, you know, at some point. I don't know if we're quite ready for it right now, but, sure. you know, Cloudfin Raptor is a card that people have their eye on. We've seen Experiment 1 already, in fact, in this match, but also in other decks besides his, mm -hmm. you know, and start to make a splash. So, you know, Evolve is looking like a fra fairly strong mechanic. Champion of the Parish is just like insane if you can surround it by as many humans as Nico has here. Yeah, I think it's fair to say Craig Wesco probably enjoyed that game. <laughs> well, apart from the many errors. But, uh, Rashad says too many green creatures for uh, it's Wesco. Like very fair, very <laughs> fair. I I kind of like the look of Nico's deck. It's it's no compromise aggro, and it has some really really nice synergies. It seems to hit very very hard, and 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 he seems to have found a nice niche with uh, with the giant growth effect, this and well with actual giant growth. And he's also got four frontline medic. Right. Okay. I mean, he could just continually yeah. turn his entire team sideways. He's only running twenty land in the deck. Humans aggro. I don't know. know if it humans aggro. Or yeah. Something? I mean, I don't know whether it has a technical name, but I quite like no compromise aggro. I yeah. think that's a great name, Marshall. Very good. So here we go. I would say that they've taken more than their three minutes, but they don't have three minutes anymore. They just have an appropriate amount of time. Yeah. And uh, the player's drawing up. There's only one land so far there for Christensen as he continues to draw parts of a uh, I think a that's hand. pretty ideal for him. So like now to second have two land. lands. Yep. I mean, he really but does he have doesn't all have ones white. and twos. Doesn't have any white. Well, it so was he a has a cavern of in a cavern. So if he names human, hmm. I think he can cast any white. I mean, I think all of his creatures are human. Experiment one, champion of the parish board. Still needs to tap white mana. He has no white mana available. But he's got a cavern. It makes colored mana. Oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can just be like, I'll so use this fine. for white. Yeah. And then he Players can next turn cast his uh, experiment one off. Our apologies for the delay. All right, we he's got a burning tree emissary. Assuming that he's going to name him in here for his cavern. On the parents board closest and it's sure enough, it's a champion of the parish, which at least from what we've seen so far is the absolutely ideal opener. Gravecrawler is going to crash into the red zone for Felipe, and he just forced to just pass the turn here. I see he's got a Liliana of the Veil and an Abrupt Decay in hand. He does not have green mana for that Abrupt Decay, however. Mm. We'll see if he has like an ultimate price or something in hand. Yep. He's gonna, uh, Nico's gonna pay two for stomping ground. Let's see what his big follow-up play is here. Looks like it's, oh, it's Burning Tree Emissary. Trigger, trigger, hmm. into Mayor of Averbrook. Is this gonna happen? <laughs> Players in the Jeez, yeah. this is ridiculous. Yeah, this is a, this is a start. He gets another trigger. That is a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a 3-3, three, three, but the mirror makes it 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. My goodness. Such explosive starts off the back of uh, yeah. Burning Tree Emissary. Don't you just love those words, uh, can't block? Oh, <laughs> so chair. beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> Christian Chin is a happy camper. He is going to get to take out probably just the emissary here as it has the least upside now that it's on uh -huh. the table. It's, it's a start, though, and, uh, and Christensen is going to be tempted to, uh, to use one of his creatures to take out Liliana here, although he actually yeah. doesn't have to this turn if he doesn't want to. He can just attack Felipe and make Felipe do a discard. It, it benefits both players. Is that a Gore Clan Rampager? Uh, <laughs> Pretty sure it was. He's also okay. got another Mayor of Averbrook, and I believe another Mayor of Averbrook on top of it. Or there's, I, and I think a Flint Hoof Boar, too. Yeah. All right, so Mayor of Averbrook, though, it does trigger, and he is going to attack with both of his creatures. Now he's going to decide five, what he wants to do here. Seven, eight. Right now, that mayor sure, it's just is straight to the face. five five, and then the other mayor also gets pumped from the other mayor because they're uh -huh. both humans. So that would have been seven damage. Uh, I think he's just going to drop Felipe down to nine here. I hope the other match is still going because this one isn't for long. Actually, it's six six, so it should be down at eight. Yeah, so he he is in fact down to eight. And yeah, you're right. And you know, Liliana Vale plusing here just isn't that impressive. All right, now the Vampire Nighthawk is significantly well, more impressive. Yeah, I mean, it's good, and now he just has to pray there's no Searing Spear. Yep. From uh, Christensen, that can just take out the Nighthawk and essentially end the game. All right, so Lotleth uh, Troll hits the bin, and wow. 
Oh, Christensen just ditches pacifism. He yeah. can't cast it. Yeah. So, but there's a searing spear off the top for yeah. Christensen. Boom. Good draw for him. Yeah. See ya. about it. And Thanks for playing. That's it. Wow, that deck was really Bam. impressive. Bam. <laughs> Jeez. Bam. <laughs> Just ran him right over. Yeah, that was a fine 10 minutes of magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I was like, oh, thanks for playing. 10 and 0, Nico Christensen, the giant growth man. <laughs> that was, as you might, that was a proper beating. Uh, yes. Wow. Caned savagely. Man. <laughs> yes. That was ridiculous. Past the Savlon. All right. Let's get to our <laughs> other match. Let's play, wow. let's play magic where the other guy gets a turn or two. We're like squirming in our seats. That was, that was just so sad. That was like I mean, car crash magic. And like game one, he missed a bunch of triggers and just like, eh, whatever, kill you this yeah. quickly. <laughs> anyway. oh, that was insane. All right. Uh, so meanwhile, two other people are playing some magic. I believe it's John Stern and Dennis Rashid. Oh, okay. So now we play the game of guess by the hands. I think Dennis Rashid's on the right. You're right. And <laughs> John Stern is on the left. Um, Ta-da! Hey. And it's already 1-0 to John Stern, who's got Liliana of the Veil down. Notice a Kessig Wolf run in play for him as well. That may become relevant later on. Meanwhile, Rashid, Augur Bolas, and he's just run out a Restoration Angel. Yeah, so he had Augur, and uh, John played Liliana of the Veil, minus it. <coughs> Rashid played a uh, Restoration Angel in response. Got another trigger off Augur. Missed. Did not find anything. Uh, but then still is left now with Restoration Angel as the uh, Augur is the one that he chose to sacrifice. Gets his untapped step. Now he's going to play a land. He's going to play a cavern. Which is not going to be super relevant in this uh, particular matchup. But whoa, Thundermont <laughs> Helkai definitely is. Rashid's already up a game in this match. And we could have oh, another quick one here. Oh, up, up one now. Okay. Looks like it. He says, attack you for eight. <laughs> Again, we have Liliana of the Veil just being ignored. Big as bypass, yeah, yeah. She just can't do anything th this turn anyway. He can just kill her next turn if he wants. <coughs> John Stern is now staring down lethal damage, and he has to find at least a removal spell and then start chaining together like Thrag Tusks or something. Mm -hmm. You know, if he can kill the Thunder Ma Hellkite <coughs> and then untap and start playing... Thrag Tusks, and then he can get back into this, but he's under a ton of pressure right say, now. I'd say, a lot of ifs in what you yeah, just said absolutely. there. Not least, because he only has four land. He has a Thrag Tusk in hand. He has a Far Seek in hand. All right, he's going to first activate Liliana. He's going to plus. Dennis is looking like he's going to discard a Sphinx's Revelation here because he's like, you know, we're not getting to that point. He might also just have another I'm one. I'm just going to kill you. Yeah. That's Rashid's plan. All right, so Olivia Voldaren. By the way, these are not 9 and 0 players. These are both at 7 and 2, just to be aware of that. Yep. As here we are in round 10. He says, pay two life, which is never what you want to <laughs> hear. And he just says, double boros. Chummy, charm. chummy. <laughs> wow. The charming Dennis Rashid. Yeah. Well, he is, of face. course. 